Hi, my name is Dr. Presley Rankin. I'm here today to present to you about two concepts in the CityU academic model, and that is accessibility and responsiveness. These two concepts are connected to CityU learning goals. Well, this is what we want our students to be able to get from their education here at CityU. Um, demonstrating diverse and global perspectives and being lifelong learners. Both of these things are demonstrated through our ability to be accessible and to design accessible classrooms and for us to model readiness so that students understand how important it is to stay in contact and have active communication. Let's talk about accessibility first. Um, we're talking about here accessible design and universal design. Accessible design is about um, providing um, the need for the needs of people with disabilities, blindness, hearing um, issues, those kind of things, limited mobility. Um, universal design, though, is also about producing an environment that's really equal for everyone, that nobody has to go to a different place in order to get their learning met. And we do this to, in order to, to meet some of these main standards for online web design. Um, you need to provide text alternatives for non-text content. You want to have captions for all your multimedia presentations. YouTube does this very easily for you. You just have to go in and edit the captions. But any video you use, you want to also be sure they have closed captioning. This is really important. You also want to make sure content is presented in different ways. You want to have videos. You want to have readings. It's important because not everybody is a visual learner. Not everybody learns through reading. You want to make sure that you cover all your aspects when you're teaching a class. You want to make sure nothing is timed, that the user doesn't have enough time to read it. Really, you don't want any flashing, moving text. It's very hard for people. It's very hard for screen readers. It's very hard uh, just in general. Um, text should be readable and understandable. Content should operate in predictable ways. And it should be easy for the students to navigate. This is the kind of stuff we do here in, the, um, in SAL, the School of Applied Leadership, where I work. Um, it's one of the things we're committed to. So let me show you some examples here. So this is from my course, um, which is the um, Curriculum Development and Instructional Design. Um, part of what we do is we make sure that the font is large and clear. We're using the font level 4, which is 16-point font. It just makes it easier for the students to read. Why make it complicated? You want to use a minimal amount of colors, um, so we try to stick to the colors that are already uh, present in the LMS. In our course modules, we also use um, icons. Icons are important because they provide another way for students to identify with what they're seeing. They understand these icons associated with the different parts of their course, and they makes it easier for them to point those out, especially if they're not um, if they're more visually oriented. We try to have both visual and um, written content. So we try to get an introductory video. We then write a little bit about it to let people know why they're reading it. We have our readings, um, our links to any extra material that the students might need. Again, more videos. These are expanded and large in order for the students to see them and play them in place. So the student doesn't need to go anywhere in order to see the video. They just click and the video starts playing. That's really important for the students because it, it gives them the continuity within the classroom. Um, we also tend to put in um, little adaptive games. Um, this can be used by students or not used. These aren't for points. These are formative, so students can test their skills. Um, it's designed to work with any student's um, ability to access it. If, if they can get into Blackboard, they can get into this. And then they have a link to the discussion board, which is where they would go to fill out their discussions. Again. We want to make sure everything is accessible, easily read, and we try to do that through these visual connections. Now, the final thing I want to talk to you about is responsiveness. And this is another important concept here, especially for our students. Students are isolated when they're online. They may not see you ever, and it's important for them to somehow connect with you in order to have a good experience. The general rule here at CityU is instructors must respond within 24 to 48 hours to an email from a student. The truth is, the sooner you can get back to the student, to the student and answer their question, the more they're going to think you're involved in the class, the more they're going to think you're there for them. And ultimately, it's going to raise your end, um, student satisfaction scores and end of course evaluations, which is really important. Here's some things that you can do to increase the perception of 
that you're responsive within the classroom. Make sure you subscribe to the question and answer forum. It's very important. Respond to the student's um, SIA, their introductory um, paragraph, so let them know that you um, know who they are and, and appreciate who they are. Also participate in the discussions, especially if a student asks a question or if you ask a student a question in the discussion board and they answer it, make sure you acknowledge that. Respond to student emails within 12 to 24 hours. It's really important, even if your response is, I can't get that information right now, but I'll respond to you as soon as I get home or the next business day. At least the students know that you received their message. You should always respond to every email, even if it's just a student telling you, um, I just turned in a paper. Just let them know you got that email. It's good to have weekly chat times when you can be reached live or on Skype um, or on Collaborate. Um, students can talk to you. They can connect with you. Even if they never use it, it's important for them to know it's there for them. And then finally, in, a, in SAL, we require our, our instructors to do at least three Collaborate sessions per um, quarter. And these don't have to be, they're not mandatory. Um, they're really just times where you're there to um, answer questions from students, maybe present them with a little information about their upcoming papers. It really, again, it's about being responsive to the students' needs. So that's everything I have. Um, if you have any questions, please get in touch with your faculty mentor or your program director. They will be able to help you with your current needs at whatever they may be. Have a great day.